Hello and welcome back to the channel. So this time we've got a review of a brand new kit and this is the DH-82A Tiger Moth. This is a personal favourite of mine, one of my all-time favourite aircraft, certainly of the de Havilland uh, range of aircraft and uh, it's fantastic to now see one of these brand new out in 132nd. I've often mentioned to uh, friends that it would be a great thing someone should do the line of de Havilland aircraft because there's, there's a lot of possibilities with this aircraft starting with the Tiger Moth it should be simple enough to go um, down the line of quite a few of these aircraft because there's a, an awful lot of these Moth type aircraft that shared similar things like tails or wings or, or whatever engines etc and who knows maybe we'll even see a, um, a Dragon Rapide one day which is obviously nothing like this but you know it'd be nice to finish it off so we live in great times uh, for modelling and this kit is no exception so let's get straight into the box this is not the box this is the box top so we've got a nice sturdy box that we usually get from ICM and there we go let's take a look inside so first off we've got the instructions and we've got this do not scold him we will replace everything so uh, there's a link there if you need to replace any parts ICM just send you out a new sprue free of charge it seems so that's a good thing to have on offer. So what we got is typical stuff from ICM. We've got colour callouts of Revel now and Tamiya paints. So that's quite interesting and it's a very generic range so you can usually work something out from there back into uh, your, your own favourite range. And we've got a nice uh, write up here in two languages and then this is the British side here, the English side even, um, running down there. So we've got a sprue layout as well showing you the sort of things we can expect so we've got uh, four sprues A through to D uh, with a clear part for the windscreens uh, but we've basically got two sprues it's just a, a, the top the top parts of both wing and then we've got the lower parts of each wing fuselage section uh, looks like the fixed under garage and a few other small things stage one just has us drill out a couple of holes uh, through the fuselage and then as we run through we've got the instrument panel going in with some side wall detail uh, then we've got some uh, of the rear bulkheads or head supports or may even be where the belts go through not sure there we've got some grab handles cut out on one of these uh, and then we're getting the fuselage halves together starting to add some rigging there i think i'd probably do that afterwards then we've got a few more parts completing the fuselage we've got two separate parts here i'm sorry i don't know what they're called uh, but I do see them on the different Tiger Moth models, so it's the it's the rear section of the sp um, spine of the fuselage running into the horizontal stabiliser. So you've got two separate parts there, depending on which variant you do. Then we've got the fixed uh, fin and rudder going on. We do have an engine in this one, so that runs through there with the, the engine mounts going back to the uh, firewall there. And then we've got the top cowling going on, as well as the side doors at the end of the cowling there as well. Then we've got the hatch. The access hatch here which presumably we could glue up we've got the other side as well then we've got this cover i've seen this again on tiger moss i'm sorry i can't remember what this is called i think it's an all-weather cover that goes over the crew compartments of the cockpit so that's an optional bit we've also got some um then we're drilling some holes here in the uh, upper part of the lower wing and then we've got the middle section of the cockpit which is where the uh, two control sticks go and the rudder pedals that then fixes onto the lower part of the lower wing that then attaches to the main spar of the lower ring that then attaches to the center section of the lower wing which makes up the bottom of the fuselage There's a couple of seats going in i'm going to leave those separate because i'm thinking we'll probably get some replacement seats with belts already in a quick boost i think i've done them usually for previous aircraft uh, so i think i'll probably just tack those in and then take them out when we can get some resin seats then we're attaching the fuselage to the wing, getting the struts ready and on, drilling out a few more holes, presumably for rigging, I would imagine. Then we've got the lower part of the upper wing going on to the struts. Uh, so we've got the wing struts and the cabane struts all fixing on. Then we've got the fuel tank going on, which closes up the center section of the upper wing. Then we've got two parts of the upper part of the upper wing but the rigging's all done in internally here it's already been catered for it's an interesting way to go about the rigging then we've got the lower parts of the lower wing and then we've just got these sections going on here at the front of the well the leading edge of the upper wing then we've got ailerons the landing gear with some uh, bracing to go on for the landing gear as well a bit more a few more bits of bracing then we've got supports for the uh 
horizontal stabiliser as well. Both sides, a few other small details going on. Propeller, a bit more rigging, and that completes the model. So it should be quite a simple thing. Uh, we've also got a mask template there as well, so you can uh, cut that out and use that or put a piece of glass over the top and then you can trace through to cut out your masking tape to mask off the windscreen. Helpful little uh, little thing there. So we've got two marking options. The first one is K2579 and this is based at Grantham. Um, so it's number three, number three flight training squadron at Grantham. And then we've got the second option, which is a more colourful affair. It's got the optional parts as well, that section here just leading up to the uh, fin and the cover for the crew compartment. And that's an overall, um, that's a training Polish ET EFTS summer 1944, so that's a World War II era one in the training scheme, T7741. Quite like that scheme there. It's quite nice, although I won't be doing either of those schemes. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, here are the decals, which are very nice. Large blocks of carrier film all the way around. It's one big block. Not on the roundels, that's right up to the um, edges of the roundels and the fin flash. We've also got the instrument panel, so there's no carrier film outstanding around there, but when you get onto the big blocks of letters, there's quite a bit of carrier film that you might want to look out for, as you can see sometimes causes a problem. There we go, very nice printing, good register. Can't sort of tell how um, strong the white is. You can't see any of the blue carrier film for it, but it might show up, but it's going on a silver background anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So let's get into the kit. So we've got all the sprues in one bag here, and it's the usual gray plastic from ICM. We've got the uh, separate windscreens, in clear plastic, no blemishes, all looks well. So now getting on to the main sprue. So what we've got here is the typical, it's it's quite soft plastic ICM, you've got to be a bit careful with it. It does melt quite quickly with uh, Tammy Extra Fin, so you don't want to use too much. Uh, but what we've got here is the fuselage halves, uh, the tailplane section, the centre sections or, or the the extra bits that fill out the other side of the lower wing and the upper wing, engine blocks, cowling, fuel tank, firewall and the chairs or seats. There's an ejector pin mark in one of these seats here in the uh, tub of the seat there. I never understand that. It must, it must be from, um, for a reason that uh, greater minds than, than what I've got could explain but there's a cent uh, uh, ejector pin mark right in the centre there. Now I understand you've probably got to push that out from this end but obviously you know you're not going to see this so if you could push it that way I don't know obviously they, they haven't chosen to do that so you've got the interior of the cockpit side walls there are a couple of ejector pin marks there but they might actually be covered and we might not see those and it's all very good nice um, crisp molding very crisp molding no flash no problem like that seam lines just running around the edges of the parts. You see how soft it is. I mean, you could bend this sprue, like, and it wouldn't snap, it would just bend. Um, we've got very subtle ribbing effect there, which is very nice, and very, very thin trailing edge. Got the, the tail skid there as well, which is quite nice with spring detail inside. So that looks a very nice sprue, very, very nice. Lots to be going on with there. Then we've got the two other parts of the wing. So this is the um, upper sections of both wings. So that's the upper wing, that's the lower wing. There's the centre section for the uh, underside of the cockpit. Oh, sorry, no, it's that way. Right, they're the lower sections then. Very confusing, this. So that there is the cockpit floor. That's the centre section there. And then you get the other two parts of the wings go on like that. Uh, so this is where you would drill for your rigging lines. There are some holes already there for the struts but not for the rigging. So that's a nice touch. Again very subtle ribbing and um, fabric texture over there, tensioning over the ribbing. Very subtly done. Very very nice. Then we've got sprue D. 
which caters for the wheels, propellers, a lot of the struts um, and finer parts and the side doors for the cowling, instrument panels, propeller, all very nice again, very finely uh, rendered here on the sprue. Very nicely done, can't see any flash, can't see any problems, no blemishes, no ejector pin marks where you're not going to want to see them. It all looks very, very good. Close up of the uh, wheels there. The instrument panel. A few other details there you can see. Propeller blades nice and sharp. Is that the uh, Pito or the uh, airspeed thing? <laughs> oh dear, you'd think I would have read a book by now on what all of these things are. Yeah, very good. So there we go, that is the uh, brand new DH82 Tiger Moth um, from ICM in 132nd scale. Uh, it looks a very nice kit, very simple, should be a quick build. Um, I'll be starting this one uh, very soon, as soon as this, you're watching this video, I'll already be well under away with this one. Going to build it right out of the box, see it all the way through, um, and I'm going to finish it in one of the Spanish Civil War liveries. I've been meaning to find an excuse to do a uh, Spanish Civil War aircraft uh, recently, and this is my excuse. Um, I was going to do a couple back along last year, we all know how last year turned out, but uh, using the, the Airfix Tiger Moth and when it turned up I've got to admit it wasn't quite as I hoped it's you know a bit soft in places uh, this one looks much more like what I'm my, what I'm after so I'm happy with that I'll probably do two uh, down the line but just for the minute I'm just going to finish this one off as a uh, Republican Air Force aircraft maybe pre-war 1935 maybe during the war um, there's a one that I did in 172nd long time ago which I uh, particularly like so I might see if I can cut my own masks for that one uh, so if you're interested in seeing how this one gets uh, builds up do make sure you follow the channel by um, clicking the link down below to subscribe to the channel uh, let me know your thoughts down below what you think of the kit if you're um, looking to pick one of these up uh, if not already please give the video a like stay tuned to the channel and I'll see you in the next video